When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Choices, options, we are constantly surrounded by them. Choices to do this or that, decisions to go one way or another, going to buy insurance, whether car insurance, home insurance, all kinds of different types of insurance. So many options from which to choose. Which option is the best one to take? Even buying a new car. So many to choose from. So many makes and models. From the smallest budget to hundreds of thousands of pounds. Where do we start? We are overwhelmed by choice. Which supermarket do we go to? Do we go to Asda or Morrison's or Sainsbury's or Waitrose or Tesco's or Lidl or Aldi or many others as well? The list goes on. Sometimes you just don't know what to do for the best. What makes it even harder is that you don't just get food from supermarkets these days. You can get anything and everything. Bring back the small corner shop is what I say. And yet sometimes it is nice to go into these huge places, these huge shops, and have so much choice. Spoilt for choice. Options. Decisions. Choices. Where do you start? And all these things are important in their own way. And of course we make choices, we make decisions, we explore different options from the very moment we wake up until we go back to bed. And then I'm reminded of a story that I heard, a poor woman in Greece comes to mind. She had had a very hard life uh, during the war years and immediately afterwards. At a time when there were no washing machines, there were very few facilities available. And she was trying to survive, she was trying to make a living by washing other people's clothes. And this woman wouldn't even allow a stale piece of bread to be casually discarded. Everything was of value. Everything was important. She had such respect for everything around her that she would even kiss that piece of bread before letting go of it. For her, bread meant both survival and something which was very holy as well. Jesus was forcing his friends and encourages us to face the question. In the midst of all the choices and the decisions that we have, 
What ultimately matters in life? What are the things that are important? What are the things that give life stability and meaning and importance and perhaps even fulfilment? And just how vital are these things? The flesh can achieve nothing, said Jesus. And it comes as a bit of a shock to hear these words from Jesus himself, who talks about bread, which our fathers ate, having no purpose, I wonder, or that the flesh can achieve nothing. What does he mean by that? The flesh is useless. The flesh can achieve nothing. Well, I suppose you could lump certain things together. Greed, ambition, self-sufficiency, amassing more and more personal things from the supermarkets and other places, of course, possessions, consumerism, and put them, all those things together into a box marked flesh. Maybe it's a bit more complicated than that. Maybe ambition isn't such a bad thing in itself. Maybe self-sufficiency isn't totally wrong. And yet, and yet Jesus seems to be saying something here about the very focus and purpose of our lives. Is life really all about getting, about feeding ourselves with the things that we don't really need? Or is life more about receiving a different kind of bread? About an openness to the Spirit? About saying yes to God? Life surely is more than what we get. Life is more than being a, a consumer. Life is about living it to the full, really living it. And that's to do as well with loving and caring and giving. There is a food that truly lasts. It is eternal. It is from God. This is the bread that came down from heaven, Jesus told his friends. It's no ordinary bread. It's not like just ordinary, an ordinary loaf. Ordinary bread doesn't ultimately last. It doesn't satisfy. But if you eat this bread, this bread from heaven, you will live forever. Life isn't, life isn't about getting, it is about receiving the gift from God. Life is about making a choice, or maybe several choices. But ultimately life is about making a choice in the, in the midst of all the different options we have to live the Jesus way. Let us pray. Lord, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us discernment in our choices and decisions, and help us to live the way of Jesus, the way of love. Amen.